together. Yeah. It's a really that nice is, system. Yeah, that's yeah. unique. I've, I haven't heard of that. I'll have yeah. to check Pretty it out. Pretty cool, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what is your discipline policy? So we use redirection and, okay. and lots of positive guidance. We do not believe in timeout. Um, it is, it's just not effective. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, I'll say this. Timeout may, may be very effective for somebody at home. Mm -hmm. On a one-on-one -on -one setting, maybe. In group care, timeout just doesn't work. You know, if you've got 10 toddlers and you're trying to put a toddler in timeout who really, truly doesn't understand the concept of timeout yet, and you're trying to put them in timeout, but you're going and changing diapers and doing all this stuff, you forgot that little Susie yeah. was in timeout, and then you've got to, you know. Um, so we use redirection. So if okay. you're having a particularly um, tough time, you know, maybe you need to go over to the cozy area and read a book. Or maybe you need to go to Miss Kelly's group and, and read, you know, a book over there, or maybe do some puzzles or things like that. So we really believe in kind of redirecting them away from what's what's making it so challenging for them. Mm -hmm. You know, that being said, it doesn't always work. You know, we have to have conver some tough conversations sometimes right. with parents and things like that, but um, we do a lot of observation. The teachers do a ton of observation, so it's easy to see trends, mm -hmm. and it's easy to kind of see things, especially, you know, with biting. The minute we, we feel that we have a biting issue, it you know, it start, we start tracking it. Um, what happened before? What happened during the bite? What happened after? You know, those kind of things. So, um, but, but yeah, certainly a lot of, of positive guidance for the children and redirection to different activities. And every room has a cozy area in it. Mm -hmm. So it's a very kind of seemingly private spot for them to kind of just, there's pillows in there. Um, the older groups have some stress balls. Mm -hmm. So there's different things that they can yeah. do. Um, the one room has like a board with like a, I feel angry or I feel sad yeah. thing you can move around. So <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Um, my last Two sections are on family and safety. Okay. So can children bring toys from home? They can, um, because a lot of times toys from home come for a child. Mm -hmm. You know, especially um, if they're new to group care or if, you know, they've maybe been on vacation for two weeks and they have to come back to the center. I mean, to tell them they can't bring something from home that's a comfort would be really hard. Um, and it wouldn't really be fair. So what we do is we let the children bring in something from home. And typically, they'll have that for about... 15 20 minutes of drop off and then they know um, to go put it in their cubby you know it's something that we teach and something that we do every day so we say you know um, is it okay if brown bear goes in his cubby now it's time to, to move on to some of our toys and then they'll put it in their cubbies every child has yeah. a, a labeled cubby and then it can come back out again at nap time um, certainly there with that being said there are some toys that are, are we do not allow them. anything with guns mm -hmm. things like that we really try um, to people know that they're not okay yeah. here but um but yeah I mean it's it's you know certainly there are days when they get piled up in the cubbies and you're like oh my goodness <laughs> but it it might mean a lot to a child to be yeah. able to have something that comforts them right um we also do show and share days for the older children so I think it's typically on Fridays mm -hmm. and they get to bring in a special toy and I think knowing that's coming for them a lot of times just Kind of makes it easier Exciting. not to, yeah, not to have to worry about <laughs> yeah. something again. But. Something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. How are the interactions with parents? Is there a monthly or weekly newsletter? Yes, um, there's actually a ton. So um, <laughs> we do. Um, I'll start with kind of what we do from the administrative side, and then what the teachers do. Um, from our end, we do a weekly update every Friday. Okay. Um, and that gets emailed out to the parents, and it says who is off the following week. So it'll say any staff changes for the following week any administrative changes for the following week, any upcoming events, any announcements, and then the whole bottom section of the email is um, looking for something fun to do this weekend. Check out mm -hmm. some of the options below, and we can list some options of things they can do with their children over the weekend. Um, but that goes out every Friday. Um, and we'll put things on there like, you know, picture day's coming up, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, Miss Amy's gonna be out for three days, or you know, whatever it is for that following week, so that they always know. And they always know they get it every Friday. Yeah. Um, and it goes, you know, through the emails. And then we also do a center newsletter. Okay. And that happens once um, per month, and they get that on the first of the month. So in the newsletter, it'll have a little article from the director. Um, I typically write something, kind of maybe trends that are happening in um, in the childcare world or things that are happening, kind of that you may have read about on social media. And I'll yeah. write a little article about that. And then we list all the important dates for the month. And then we highlight each classroom. So there'll be a picture and a description. What did they do for the month and what are they going to do for the following month? And it's just a brief snapshot for each classroom. Right. And it kind of gives the parents a way to kind of see, you know, well, I'm not in toddlers yet, but I've noticed like some of the things they're doing through the newsletter. Mm -hmm. So, and then there's always information on there about some of our online blogs and things like that that we have. 
Yeah. Um, so that's on there. And then um, we also have the classrooms that do um, their own classroom newsletter. So that's okay. pretty fun because yeah. there's lots of pictures on that. <laughs> so they do their own. And then every day, part of our curriculum is a what in the world happened form. Mm -hmm. And that's an email that gets sent out to all the families in the classroom. And it just kind of says as a snapshot, like, what did we do today? Yeah. You know, what did we learn? What did we do? There's pictures on there. And it'll say, like, in each curriculum area, what did we do? Like, you know, we did this today for Math Counts, or we did this for Science Rocks, and it's really nice because, especially after a long day, if you get in the car and you say, oh, you know, what'd you do today? And they're like, played. <laughs> yeah. And you're kind of like, oh, okay, this yeah. lets you kind of build on it. Right. Like, well, I heard you played with, you know, Mr. Mouse today, uh -huh. and then it kind of, kind of bridges that gap between home and school, yeah. so it's a nice, nice thing to do. And then we also have journals. Okay. And journals are, we require our teachers to write in them twice a week. And what they are is kind of a communication tool between the parents and the teachers. Um, they'll put pictures in them with little mm -hmm. notes, and then they ask the parents to write back. So, you know, maybe they went to the zoo over the weekend, and you want to write about that yeah. so that we can talk about it on Monday. So it's really a kind of a communication tool between right. the, the teacher and the families. Um, we also do emails, random emails, random calls home. We try to, like, do probably about two or three of those per month per classroom, just random you know, so that every time your phone rings, it's not like, oh my gosh, it's the daycare, yeah. what happened? Yeah. So we do kind of like happy checks, we call them, you know, just to kind right. of say something something nice. Um, we do do a lot of um, family events, and we communicate that through just like a sign-up sheet by the mm -hmm. computer. Um, it's kind of just a visual for parents. It's easier for them to sign up that right. day. Um, we also have a parent advisory board that is a group of voluntary parents that meet every other month. Um, we talk about things like staff appreciation, parent concerns, um, facility concerns. It's kind of like a roundtable discussion on kind of, you know, what's what's been going on. Where you know we update them on any kind of hiring or recruitment things going on or anything going on with, um, you know, special within the classrooms. And um, it's just kind of a laid back time to kind of get some feedback right. and, and stuff. So we do that. And um, I'm trying to think, if there's anything else. Um, Anytime we have a new staff, as far as communication goes, anytime we have a new staff, we have their bio. Every every teacher has a bio outside of the door of the classroom where they work at. But anytime it's a new teacher, we do that bio right away, and we set it by the computer station so that every parent can see we've hired somebody new. Mm -hmm. It lists their name, their photo, and then everything that's on our other bio so that parents can kind of say, oh, yeah, you, you must be Sheena. Or, you yeah, know, so. they know what's yeah. going on. <laughs> um, okay, what are some safety regulations your center follows? Um, so everybody is asked, I'm trying to think of the basics, <laughs> everybody's asked to wash their hands before going into every classroom. Um, right now, and washing their hands before lunch and before snack and all of that, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of hand washing, so that's kind of everywhere. Um, before and after sensory table play and all of that kind of stuff. Our infant rooms are shoeless environments, so parents have to either slip on shoe covers or take their shoes off because their babies are on the floor a lot, so that's a big one. Um, our teachers are required to get health appraisals uh, um, every two years, and then um, we do practice fire drills, disaster drills, intruder drills, shelter in place drills. We do all of those kind of drills with our children. Um, we try to do at least one a month, um, not of each of them, <laughs> but yeah. one a month, and yeah. then we sit together. Um, and then um, we have a secure. I know you probably know you couldn't yeah. get in, so <laughs> you can't get in without yeah. a code. Um, as far as safety in the sense of who can pick up and drop off, our teachers are very, very well trained at we do not um, release a child to somebody we do not know. Even if they're claiming to be Susie's grandma, if we don't know them, what we'll do is we'll go get their file, we'll match up their ID, make sure they're authorized to be released, and then once we know that, we'll let them stay in the building, but then we'll call the parents and say, you know, grandma's here to pick up, right. was she supposed to? Now, if they tell us ahead of time, then we'll just ID grandma and let her go. Yeah. But um, we always double check with yeah, the parents exactly. if we haven't haven't learned. Um, right now, one of the big things, um, I don't know if you've heard about the measles outbreak going on everywhere, but um, what Bright Horizons decided to do because of that, um, typically, I'll try to give you the short version, <laughs> typically children um, cannot get vaccinated for the MMR until um, usually anywhere after 12, 12 to 15 months, somewhere around there, um, which means that our babies essentially are not protected because they haven't been able to get the vaccine yet. Mm -hmm. So our goal was kind of to set in some policies and procedures to protect them as much as possible, at least right now until 
um, they kind of the CDC kind of lifts their alert on this on this crazy measles outbreak. So um, we have required every single teacher in the building to provide documentation of their MMR, which has not been done in the past. Um, we gave them kind of a two week window to prove that they've had the vaccine, okay. um, and then we are not allowing any visitors, even tours. Um, to enter the infant classrooms. We are not allowing siblings to enter the infant classrooms. Um, we're really trying to protect them as much as we can. Right. So um, that's kind of something new that we're doing for yeah. health and safety right now. But um, And then we have a, a pretty serious, um, and, and one that we really stick to, uh, an illness policy. Mm -hmm. So if a child has um, symptoms of, of something that, um, you know, if they have it's pretty lengthy, but I'll try to sum it up. If they have a fever, we ask that they stay home until they are fever-free, um, and at least um, the next day following when they've gotten the fever. Um, so if they had a fever on Monday, even if it's gone by Tuesday, they have to stay out. They're not able to come back till Wednesday. Um, same with, you know, if they've had loose stool or if they've had, you know, vomiting. And um, there are some areas of gray there, you know, breastfed babies sometimes have looser stool and things like that. But yeah. if it's an atypical thing, for that child, and, and you notice that we will we will send the child home, because um, we're really I mean our job is to make sure that every child here is as healthy and safe as possible, mm -hmm. and the best way to do that is to really stick to that illness policy. Right. So it does make some parents very angry at times, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we do that, and then um, all of our stuff in all of the classrooms, um, all the toys are only the toys that are recommended for those age groups. We have choke tubes in every classroom. Um, that is for the younger classrooms that the toys go in. If it's, you know, smaller than a choke tube, it can fit down their throat. So right. we don't keep toys in there like that. Um, there's ice packs in all of the rooms, um, band-aid, and first aid kits in all of the rooms, all the things like that. Um, so a lot of, a lot of health and safety mm -hmm. stuff. I hope that was enough. No, that was I'm sure I'm missing yeah, some. No, you <laughs> touched on a lot of my questions on oh, your good, safety. Good. So, but uh, if a child has medicine, do mm -hmm. you give them their medicine? What kind of happens with we that? We do. Um, so you have to fill out an authorization for medication form. Okay. Um, even for something as simple as chapstick, you have to fill it out. So okay. it's anything. It's topical ointment, chapstick, um, prescriptions, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So what happens is um, the parent comes in and fills that form out. Mm -hmm. If it's a non-prescription medication, then they are able to use it for, um, you know, if want to say three consecutive days and then after that they, they're not able to use it um, but they can use that we have the form signed off we have it labeled and they can use it if it's a prescription it has to be signed by a doctor or it's in its original script that has the doctor's name and information on it and the child's name um, we prefer that only lead teachers do the administering of the medications um, and there is a two-hour course that all teachers have to take on administering medications here at the center um, we initial we sign every every time that we give a medication, and then a, another caregiver has to initial it. Okay. That they witness the same dose mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but no, we there is there is um, kind of no limits to that. I mean, we really, you know, as, as long as the parents are willing to work with us, we have a little um, little girl who has juvenile diabetes, mm -hmm. and we provide her insulin three or four times a day, if not more. Test her blood, all of that kind right. of stuff. So. Um, we had a little boy who was in our infant program who was on oxygen. I mean, as long as we have all the proper documentation yeah. and the teachers are feeling comfortable and trained, we will go ahead and administer medication. Okay. Um, my last question is, if a child gets hurt here, what would you do? So we have incident reports that we fill out. Well, first, <laughs> take care of the child, obviously. <laughs> um, depending on the severity of the case, you know, oftentimes if it's something that the teachers feel um, they're not sure about or something, they'll call myself or Amber, our assistant director, and one of us will come down and help. But um, we always do another check. We always have somebody else check, just another set of eyes, you know. Right. Do you think this is something? Anytime it's a head injury, anytime, no matter how small, we call the parents. Um, just to let them know because it's going to be their call if they want to decide what to do because, you know, head injuries can be pretty serious. So mm -hmm. anytime it's, you know, chin up, we always yeah. call. Um, but we fill out an incident report, um, and it details everything.